Hi everybody, it's Christine at CL Aldridge Art, and I have come back to continue coloring on um, uh, Spica, the little dragon that I started on yesterday's stream. And um, I, what a difference a day makes! It's uh, I, I worked on her quite a bit after the stream yesterday, and I wanted to show you some of the things that I did. Um, feature, of course the Black Widow pencils that I am using and um, uh, just catch up on some of the differences of uh, what I wasn't able to do uh, during the show yesterday. Um, and I've since watched the playback and lots of wonderful things have happened since then. So I wanted to come on and share those and share how I continued with this and what I did, and um, hopefully uh, you'll find something useful that you can use, uh, whether or not you're coloring her or uh, something else. I also wanted to say thank you so much to all of the people who bought Spica during the show yesterday. Um, and all kinds of things happened as I was uh, proceeding about my business today. So uh, one of the things that we talked about in the stream yesterday was the fact that these Black Widow pencils are on sale. Normally they're like $16.77 for a tin of 24, but Albert, who owns the Black Widow company, put them on sale, on special, 20% off on Amazon. Uh, they're $13.50. Uh, and I was actually, uh, I got a gift card from my Amazon affiliate uh, membership yesterday. And uh, it was just enough to cover the third tin. So I am pleased to say that I have the Scorpions on their way. They'll be here next week or later this week. I don't know. Well, they say next week, but oftentimes Amazon ships them Prime even though I don't have Prime and I don't actually pay for it. But uh, So it's very cool. So I get to say I'm going to have all 72. And then the only ones that I'll need are the ones that are for the skin tones, which are not yet available, but will be hopefully soon. If you have not tried the Black Widow pencils, watch and see what they can do. They're wonderful. Uh, so that was a bit of good news. And uh, also from yesterday's stream, now I, I watch back all of my streams, mostly so I can catch uh, what happened in the chat and to see if there were any questions that I did not get to see. So I made some notes. I want to say congratulations to Susie at, um, oh gosh, and I meant to write it down. Um, I will put a link, however, down below uh, in the description of this video. So down there, uh, look for a link to Susie, uh, who is a colorist. She has just posted her first video and uh, I have subscribed to her channel, and it is a uh, just a walkthrough of the books, coloring books that she has, and things that we can look forward to her coloring in on her channel. So there is that. Congratulations to Susie. Um, okay, and then the other thing is, is, as I was watching the playback, and I was a little discombobulated yesterday because. I had woken up late, and I hadn't had my uh, my first cup of coffee. I hadn't really been able to finish my first cup of coffee before it went cold. Uh, that was the subject of some discussion, and uh, a uh, a little angel slipped away during the stream, and she put uh, use, utilized my. PayPal tip jar and uh, made it so that I would not be out of coffee. <laughs> and, uh, 
and uh, and since I had coffee, I just it was just not you know hot. Uh, I ended up uh, using that to purchase the uh, Dutch edition of Villain San, which uh, I am pleased to say will be here the first week of February, so I can hardly wait to show you that. It um, matches, hang on, it matches the uh, Dutch edition of Zemla Snova by Thomas Tomislav Tomek, which is Dramenvanger. And so I've ordered the, the Dutch version from Muse, uh, which is, uh, it's book something, and I can never say it, but it, what it is is it's, it's Bill and Son. So uh, it's the companion to this book, which is just full of astounding imagery. And um, if you have never seen Zemlis Nova, you have been living under a rock. <laughs> but uh, the Dutch version of Zemlis Nova is um, overall, I think it's on, uh, there's been direct comparisons between the two, the you know original one and this one. I think that the images are placed a little nicer on this publication, uh, the Dutch version, and um, I, I think it's slightly better paper. I could be wrong since I've not ever seen the original. And so many of the images were cut off originally because they were bigger than uh, the publisher used paper to publish. So all, both books feature cut off images, but um, for the most part, they are like this. They are, you know, framed and, and beautiful and on the page. And this is great paper. So I've got the companion to this coming. And uh, when it comes, I'll show it to you. When I left uh, yesterday, our little girl was pretty washed out. She looked overall very much like her tail. I hadn't had a chance to do any of this part uh, or work on her face at all. And as you can see, I've, I've made quite a bit of progress. I've darkened her up quite a lot. Uh, and um, shaded, used the purple to shade dark around, leaving a, a lighter strip where the light is hitting her here to accent her polka dots. I chose to uh, do her spikes in uh, dark purple and then ending them in the dark pink and I did pretty much the same thing up here on all her little spikes so I'll zoom you down and hopefully you'll be able to see that a little bit better and let me just make sure that we're in focus I think that's I think that's good focus. So I'm going to click down on that. As you can see, I did her eye in a very pretty color of turquoise, and I have left just the parts uh, that need to be completed. And so I start here. What I uh, well, the first thing I want to do. Is I want to um, darken this up with just a little bit more of this uh, light pink. This is the fancy pink in the Cobra set, CB number 43. And I'm just adding a heavier layer than I did before. I had color mapped most of it, which to me color, color mapping is simply putting your first light layer down so that you know where your colors are going. Um, it helps me to keep track of what of what I'm doing 
when I color map. And it also helps me to just determine whether or not my color palette is working out. Normally I would, um, would not be using all of these um, pinks and purples for my dragon, but uh, why not? Why not have a pink dragon? Dragons don't have to be green or red or, uh, you know, or blue. They can be pink. And so why not have a fierce little dragon who is pink? So that is the uh, darkest shadow, and I'm just putting that around where her little, because these are supposed to be spikes, and so her little uh, webs between her spikes uh, join up, and where they join, there would be a natural shadow. This is the grape, which is CB118, which is a slightly lighter purple. And so I'm just going to come down. Whoops, wrong. Should probably do it in the right space. Just going to come down slightly on top and slightly over where I put that other purple space. And now I'm going to use, this is out of the original Black Widow set, and you can always tell the difference on the Black Widow's as to what set the pencil comes from. Of the three sets, there is the Black Widow, and it ha it's red writing with a red Black Widow. Uh, the Cobras are gold writing with a gold Cobra out here at the end. And the Scorpions, I don't have yet, but whatever color writing is on them, they also then have a Scorpion at the end. Of the pencil so you can always tell at a glance which pencil goes with which set and then they all of course go with each other so each set comes in 24 and all of those in the 24 set are color coordinated and then the next set uh, you know has 24 also color coordinated and then you know, there, with the 24 in each set, if you have the whole set, you have 72. And then there are is another set of two 12 packs that are coming, but are not yet here yet, that will have, um, they're not yet available to purchase, that will have uh, skin tones. One will be a light skin tone coordinated the other will be dark skin tone, tone coordinated. So I think that's pretty cool. As soon as those hit the market, I imagine that all of the Black Widow pencil lovers will be grabbing a set. So just like that, you've got your deep shadows. And I probably went a little too deep there. But that's okay because we can we can always add a little more pink. Why is this always so much easier when I'm just coloring it for myself and not for the camera? So I just want to say thank you to all of you guys who have been so supportive and so wonderful and who bought the little dragon and who cheer me on when my little phone goes cha-ching, which reflects a sale. It's just, it's really lovely to have such wonderful support for an artist to have wonderful support in the coloring community. It's why we do it. And it's what makes it so worthwhile. So this is just a little tortillion, which is just a little paper stump. And I, I have one that has various shades of purple on it, so I'm just going ahead and using that one. You don't actually have to use a tortillion, but I just happen to like the kind of final burnish it gives on it. So as you can tell, I, I have, um, I've added quite a bit of contrast uh, to all of the, all of the little features of this girl, 
And I wanted to just sort of leave her face, the front part of her face, where her nose is, lighter than the rest of her face. Um, but not by a huge margin. So that is what I think that I've achieved. I'm just trying to soften up that shadow line and sort of bring it down. Because this is meant to look like a, like a little bump in her head where it goes up into her spikes, where her spikes start. So I've done her facial spikes, uh, dark, darkened, you know, did all of the, the shading in the space color first, then the dark purple, uh, then the, the, uh, uh, the, the more vibrant purple, which is actually a color called plum pudding. And uh, now I am going to use the plum pudding. I'm going to actually give this a little, little zhuzh through the sharpener. Uh, I am using the Black Widow or the um, Prismacolor sharpener with my Black Widows. It works just fine. I use. I have a tendency to use the bigger of the two holes, which gives you a blunter point um, because I find that I break it a lot less when I use a blunt point as opposed to when I use a super sharp point which is what the other little hole the small hole gives you it gives you a longer sharper point and that's great if you have a hard pencil but it can be very difficult to uh, use, except for very lightly, a um, soft core pencil with that small hole. It's better to go with a shorter blunter point because it's stronger, stronger under pressure. And so I find that I rarely break a tip off, even if I'm, you know, what I'm doing right now is pressing fairly hard to get a vibrant color right off rather than layering it. And I'm just turning it so that your you know my hand is comfortable since most of us will turn our books. Um, I am no different. I turn my book to and you should if you're more comfortable coloring at a particular angle if you can stay in the lines better on a downstroke instead of an upstroke then that's what you should do there's no right way or wrong way to color if you want to color heavy-handed color heavy-handed if you if you want to learn to do light layering then you know there's lots of us to study I do really light layering when I do um, gemstones because I like to blend my colors absolutely seamlessly. So I'm just putting, a, I'm using the Space CB80 out of the Cobra set. Just putting in the very darkest right there just along the line not working it outward or anything like that, just putting it right along the outside edge of her spikes. Or the, the under side of her spikes. And going from there. I'm so excited to have the third set of these coming in. And <clears throat> it's a great sale at Amazon, too. $13.50 American. Um, 
And then the Dutch edition of, I did happen to notice that the Dutch edition of Zemla Snowba is sold on Amazon US by Thomas Love Tomics directly. And I think that means that he might be out of the Croatian version, which is the one that he's been selling. Um, but the Dutch version of Villain San is not on Amazon US. So I had to order mine from um, Amazon UK and it's like $12.73 pounds, 12.73 British pounds, which worked out to, um, well, the exchange rate today is 1.33 something. So it costs $1.33 American to one <coughs> British pound. So with shipping, it worked out to be $25.02. So, whoops. Okay. Where am I going? I am going with the plum pudding, which is a brighter pink. Wait, that's wrong. I'm going with the grape. which is my medium purple. And I'm really just going right over the space color. I don't want to put too much in here because these are very fairly narrow flaps. just going to put the pink a little um, this is back to the plum pudding which is a pretty bright pink but notice I'm still leaving that strip of light down the center of each flap and that's going to be our highlight so that they have dimension I'm just mixing up the colors because when I blend over them with the lighter pink. The lightest pink is fancy pink. And so I'm just going to blend over these little guys. Starting at the bottom. And it just pulls it all together. I just love that. though. And the reason why, of course, you build up colors when you want to do blending is so that they have something to slide around on. That's why I do color mapping too. I do a little color mapping so that there's already a layer of wax on my paper for my uh, wax, you know, my the blend blending colors to slide around on. since wax is naturally slippery. And if you doubt that, do what I did once, which was I used, I used paste wax on my hardwood floors. <laughs> you couldn't walk, you could not walk anywhere in my house in anything less than rubber-soled shoes for years. <laughs> because the floors had been waxed and they were so slippery oh my goodness if you tried to walk around in socks you would slip and fall with no i mean no doubt about it i actually had to put a warning sign and warn people who came into the house don't walk on the hardwood floors in your stocking feet 
<laughs> I was, I, I never made that mistake again. But oh my goodness, it was a riot. Okay. All right, and just like that, voila, you have a pretty little girl with her pretty little face and her great big white teeth and her friendly little little butterflies. And um, I posted on my Instagram that there have been a bunch of people who've colored this already and who are posting it in my group. And I've started posting out those um, those versions on my uh, on my Instagram account. The first one I posted today, and I'll, I've got another one I can post tomorrow. And they're just adorable. All the different takes on on this little dragon. Um, okay, now <clears throat> I want to darken up her tail too. But, um, but, you know, keeping in mind that she's sort of further in the background than this tail is. So, um, I will be purposely leaving more light spots or light on this one. So it won't be nearly as dark, but it definitely needs to be, to have the color bumped up to be a little bit richer. Um... And it could just be my own sort of personal um, disdain for pastel colors. I'm I'm much more of a jewel tone uh, type person, so I will almost always go for the darker colors, um, the dark rich colors, as opposed to the um, to the pinks and the the uh, but. You can, you can definitely do a dark, rich pink, and that's what I've done up here on her skin. Uh, amethyst sort of purple on her. Uh, although, uh, it's funny because amethyst is a color in this set. Uh, it's actually in the Black Widow, but it's a different um, tone of purple than I wanted to use. It is a much more... Um, blue purple I believe let me and this one is a much more red purple the, these are uh, let me see if I can find yeah see amethyst amethyst is a much more blue purple whereas the plum pudding is is more like a hot pink it's a mauve um, but these are the the grape it the grape is a blue purple but it's not of the same it matched the tulip better <laughs> it met the grape matched the space and the tulip better than the amethyst did the amethyst was just too pink or i guess maybe too red maybe i've got it wrong maybe I'm using the blue purples, and this is a red purple. Probably, probably so. What do I know? <laughs> I, I just color. I'm just new to coloring, so I can draw them, and then I let everybody else teach me how to color them. So now, because when I was doing this in the stream, I didn't want to darken up my colors too quickly and it takes time to build up your colors and you want to do it slowly because it's so easy to make it hard to move your colors. All you have to do is do the final crush of any kind of tooth in your paper and you're done. You, you can no longer move those colors. Um, so I think it's far better to take the time and do it slowly and let your colors build up than, uh, than to do it fast and then not have, not have the subtlety 
or the, you know, the result that you're looking for. So even though, you know, I, I'm doing this really light handed and just letting the, the, the wax come off the pencil. I'm not forcing it to onto the pencil or, you know, forcing it onto the paper. And that preserves that line, that light line, all the way through. All I really did was just narrow it up a little bit. So now it looks more like a highlight on a cylinder. And then if you really want to, you know, make your colors smooth, you just go over them with this tortillion. And voila, just like that, you have a much more beautiful blend of colors. And you still have your, you know, your light area preserved. Okay, so moving on. I've been thinking about this butterfly and what color we should do that butterfly. I was thinking that it would be nice to do a butterfly in uh, blues um, as opposed to uh, as opposed to any of the other colors. So I'd like it to be a fairly deep blue and I think that if we try using the Zephyr um, which is in the Black Widow original set it's either the Zephyr or the Starry Night maybe we'll use the Starry Night it's a little more of a purple blue but if we use the Starry Night, what shall we use as its foil? How about... Hmm. See, I was thinking originally... Originally, I was thinking about using the Aquarius which is a more uh, teal, turquoise kind of blue. I think maybe the Aquarius would be good with the Forget-Me-Not. Okay, those are the same colors actually that I used in her eye. So that I think will work. All right, so the Aquarius is out here. Let me grab the Forget-Me-Nots which has always been one of my favorite flowers. So I've got a Black Widow 107, which is the Forget-Me-Not, and it is the lighter of the two pencils. So let me try to use this first. And I'm going to be very, very light with it because I am color mapping. I'm testing to make sure that these colors will work. Before I commit to covering the entire butterfly with them. And plus, if you're doing it fairly lightly, uh, I have found that it's sort of easier to erase the first layer. 
and even though I am going to color this whole area this same color of blue, I'm doing it in each section individually because sometimes as you're working on something, you'll get inspired by something that you see. So, you know, if you're working on any particular section and you suddenly can visualize uh, something that would be pretty to do, like for instance, just this very second, I think that I could add maybe a bit of green into this that would look really yummy with that Aquarius. So if I were to add some of this Venom, which is uh, the C uh, Cobra set 04, which is a very pretty green color, I think that that would make an interesting looking butterfly. So if, if I were to add some of that in here, so that our butterfly is sort of got some interesting coloration there. I think I want that darker blue. So I've got my Aquarius here. So now I'm just going to go in here with the Aquarius and work it out just a little bit. So you don't always have to have a plan. <coughs> Sometimes you just have to proceed slowly and go with your vision. Now I already know that if this butterfly's wings are curved that there needs to be a highlight space running right along these lines where the light would be hitting the top of the curve of its wings as they're open. So I am going to approach this from two angles. So I started with a little bit of the, the darker color in there and then I'm also going to start with a little bit of the darker color out here and work slowly until I find that highlight space that I want. And I'm being fairly light with this one. And I'm only going to here because I'm thinking that that highlight might, or that light might Cross its wing right across here, but I'm not because I I've got this green in my hand. I'm not sure if I want to just ignore my lines, which I guess I could do. This is the Aquarius that I'm using. And then see how much lighter I'm using it than here in this dark space because I'm still sort of trying to decide what I want to do. And I can just blend a little bit of green in as well. Right on top of the blue. Which will change it just slightly to a different shade.
And then I can darken it up. So I'm actually making my own unique color using the pencils. And this works just like, um, you know, when we've been watching Sammy do hair and, you know, she's doing those, those flicking lines and they just sort of end in jaggedy points toward the highlight. So just like that. And you can see how it, you know, how you've got your highlight roughed in and now you can start to more define the colors that you are working with by adding maybe a little more of the uh, dark here on your little lines. Maybe even pulling a little bit of it. The, now I'm back to the venom green now. So adding a little bit of that in there. And just sort of using the, working slowly and, and using the space until you find exactly where you want that light. And if you've got a little bit too much in any spot, then you can use an eraser like this and just back it out of there. Just very, very gently. Oops. And you should have a uh, scrap piece of paper to clean off your eraser as you go. Rub off the wax because the er an eraser will pick up wax. So I will tweak and define that as I work on it. But since I kind of like this color combination, I will go ahead and go with it. Uh, let's see here. So we've got the Aquarius. Come down here. And then that light probably would not hit underneath this wing very much. Because this this wing is over this bottom part. So I can actually just press fairly hard with this Aquarius right along that wing defined line and that sort of puts that down and then it would be darker over here as well But it would show up, where would it show up here? Yeah, right about there. So it's not going to, I mean, it's going to pick it up just very slightly in the bottom portion of that wing. So it doesn't matter if you're coloring something whimsical or something serious 
if you learn the fundamentals of, you know, learning where your light is going to hit anything, um, and just, you know, start looking at, at objects and looking at the way that, that they are highlighted, um, you can vastly improve your coloring or not. I mean, as, as you want. I mean, there is nothing wrong with straight coloring. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Just filling in the spaces. Or you can, you know, you can learn to shade. Okay, now, this is, um, I usually do my butterflies in black ink. I mean, as far as the highlight. Um, but I will show you how you can do it without using black ink. Um, let me find a black. Well, you, and it doesn't have to be black, by the way. You can make the dragonfly's body any color you want. Um, but I am going to use the black, which in this case is the Black Widow, uh, which is B111. And... So that is going to be in the red set, and that is, no, that is spider web. There it is. Now let's test it. I always test my colors um, on the kind of paper that I'm using. So this is, yeah, there's, there's the, <laughs> as of January 21st, the pound exchange rate is 1.3367881021, and you can find that information online. Just put in the pound exchange rate for U.S. dollar, and you'll find it. Okay, so that is makes a nice black. So I am going to work this uh, relatively hard. I am just going to leave a tiny little sliver of white highlight down the middle. Same thing on the head. Oops. Well, it's okay. And if you want, you can just solid color it and put it back in with a Posca pen or with a, a jelly roll or something like that. But that just makes it look like he's got a little shaft of light that hits him. Okay. Now we can, I'm going to turn it upside down to be able to do the other wing. So I'm just going to, since I now know, note that I'm not color mapping this side, mostly because I now know how I want my colors to run. Still going to put that primarily green right in there. Come over the top of this one with some green. And I think this one, I went green down here at the bottom.
and then came over it with the blue, which is the Aquarius. I think that I went dark here. And what I'm doing here really is just pressing really hard. And just slowly working my way toward exactly where I want that light to hit. I'm just checking it for the from the top angle to make sure that I'm on the mark. Of where I want it to be. And I'm going to turn this over because it, it I, it's for me, it's an easier angle to color at to do this with a downward stroke. Just sort of jaggeding up that line, making it a little more jagged so that it's not quite so Yeah, and that creates a beautiful, you know, beautiful highlight right down the edge of the wing and makes the uh, butterfly look shiny. And that's how that's done. I mean, it, it's really, there's no, there's no, you know, super, super duper secret or uh, whatever. It's just you know, playing playing with the light until you get it exactly where you want it. And just going slowly. You know, go slowly until you get a feel for it. And if you mess it up, remember that you can always lighten up your colors just like that with your eraser. So if you don't get your highlight right just at the very beginning, you can always go back in and fix it, provided that you haven't put down so much color that you cannot lift it back up. Which is why you go slowly. So you're, you're constantly sort of watching. Oh, I think she's pretty. This is coloring with sparkles without using sparkles. <laughs> and, uh, okay. So now, we, since I think we have the, or maybe I put it back. We did, I did. I put it back. That's got a weird point on it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sacrifice a little of that black and take that point point down a bit. That's close enough, I think. What I want to do is her little claws, and. the same principle. See how I'm just leaving a little, I don't know if you can see that or not. <coughs> I 
a little tiny highlight in the center of her claw. I think you can see that. I think you can see that. So that it looks like light is hitting the little tiny claw. <laughs> I realize that's kind of hard to see. And my vision is starting to, my focus is starting to go for the day, so. But that's, you know, you just do the, the same thing with the little claws. Just leave your little band of light. Okay. Jeez, I've got practically got the <coughs> camera sitting on the so um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop this one here just uh, and I, and I may yet do another uh, piece of it. I hope that I was able to uh, assist you in improving any shading techniques that you might not have known about. Uh, and uh, if you learned something, please go ahead and comment in the comments. And if you would like to color this uh, drawing, you can find her in my Etsy shop. I will put a link to her. Uh, her name is Spica uh, in the description. I will also put a link to all three tins of these marvelous Black Widows on sale or off. I can highly recommend them uh, as an excellent pencil, soft like a Prismacolor, uh, beautifully pigmented, lovely names, sets of 24. There are three tins I'll put all three in and um, well worth well worth it on sale or off um, and until we meet again please color something pretty this is Christine Aldridge signing off thanks for watching <laughs>